What's going on guys and welcome to the first episode of my FIFA 17 career mode. Yes, the wait is finally over and my FIFA 17 career mode has begun and I want to start off straight away by saying a big, big, big thank you to all of you for staying patient with me whilst I had no FIFA 17 content to bring you over the past few weeks but now I have my hands on the game, I'm super excited to begin work on all of my series. I really hope you guys are looking forward to this series and if you'd like to see episode number 2 later on tonight then get this video to 2,000 likes and I'll upload episode number two in just a few hours. So today we start the series and you can see episode number two featuring our first Premier League game later on tonight. If you guys can get this video to 2,000 likes, which I'm sure you guys can do because you are awesome subscribers. So as the career mode begins, you can see we are starting off by customizing my avatar, which is of course a new feature for FIFA 17. I think you've got 12 profiles to choose between there. They're all male, of course, and uh, the, the, the customizer, the appearance, you get to choose between the shirt and the tie, the suit, and also the tracksuit as well and also how they look a little bit as well you can't really customize it too much and scan a game face and whatnot but I just chose one right there which was relatively young because uh, I'm you know I'm still quite young at 23 years old and we get ourselves into the game so yes yeah, super exciting my FIFA 17 career mode has begun and a question for you guys as well to start off today's episode too because I know you guys will be getting FIFA 17 over the next few days or maybe you already have it right now and that is what team will you guys be starting your first career mode with let me know in the comment section down down below because I've had loads of tweets from you guys of late saying, oh my god, I can't wait to get my hands on the game and yesterday when I got the game, so many of you guys saying I can't wait till I can start playing as well. So let me know in the comment section down below, what team will you be managing first in your first career mode? Let me know in the comment section down below. But still, as we get into the game then, as you can see, we'll be starting off with Middlesbrough in this career mode. That's because I ran a poll and you guys voted for Middlesbrough to be the team I would start with. So thank you to over 13,000 of you that got involved in that poll. I I really, really do appreciate it. Over 13,000 of you voted, and of course the team that won the poll were Middlesbrough. So we start off at the Riverside Stadium, then of course a newly promoted side to the Premier League for this season, and I'm really, really excited for this project to begin. So you see the layout here, and also a new feature as well. You saw the avatar, another new feature. This one here is the objective sort of section. Now we've had objectives before, in uh, FIFA 16 career mode and before that as well but this is an objective sort of in-depth look at the objectives where you have more than just on the pitch objectives too so you see we have youth development here we have brand exposure financial domestic success and continental success and you see the number as well and that is a priority for how important those objectives uh, are so for example the brand exposure the youth development these are medium objectives you see me going through them here and you can take a look at them and read them if you would like pause the screen if I'm going a little bit too quickly and also the continental success the domestic success and the financial uh, side of as well. Uh, the financial objective is the most important for Middlesbrough being a high objective at number two you can see the aims there but the domestic success is very low and of course the continental success is irrelevant in the first season as we are not in a European competition at all and in domestic success as well with the aims we've been given there finishing a mid table in the Premier League for 1-2 that's definitely something I think we can do in the first season so of course starting with Middlesbrough as you guys would know if you've been watching me before uh, I always do tend to prioritise the league over the cups anyway so to finish your mid table I definitely think we can do that in the first season and knowing it's a very low objective as well does make me feel quite confident knowing in the first season I'm not going to be under too much pressure I feel so that's really really important so we also take a look at the finance screen as well this is another new feature for career mode this season as you can see it's just a, a sort of a more in-depth look really a more in-depth breakdown of where your money's coming in and also where it's going out as well so you can see some transactions here these are the players that uh, Middlesbrough sold or bought during the summer transfer window and this was before before I took charge. If you want to see who those players are, you can take a look at them here as well. And also another look at the budget as well. We've seen this before. It's the slider where you can just adjust the transfer and the wage budget as well. Of course, Middlesbrough, you would have seen, started off with a budget of around £24 million. I got a 30% boost for playing the game uh, previously in previous copies of FIFA. And also as well, we had a pre-season tournament to come as well, where there is the prospect of gaining some more prize money to add to our budget. So as you start off with Middlesbrough then, of course, having these aims for this season, you know, finishing a mid table in the league for example that's one thing I definitely think we can do you saw the financial aims as well we will make sure hopefully that we can achieve those aims off the pitch as well as on the pitch as well such as with the youth academy too bringing in a player to play in the first team on a regular basis and you see the squad we've assembled I say assembled I always say that the squad we've inherited here with Middlesbrough as well this is how the team currently looks in the squad report and you'll also see the first 11 as well how I've got it set up as we go into pre-season now if this is the first series of mine you've watched uh, what I will 
will say is this. Uh, I am someone who tends to bring in young players and someone who tends to sort of develop youngsters for the first team and try and improve the whole depth of the squad as opposed to just worrying about the first 11. Um, some people prefer to spend the bulk of their transfer budget in the first season, the first transfer window on a big name to try and improve the first 11 straight away. But for me, I tend to do like a gradual series really. I bring in young talent, we nurture them over the years, they eventually become more and more important as we go on and eventually our squad gets stronger together. So it's not just one or two big names coming in the first season. We tend to try and build the squad up gradually and it's a really nice transition from what we take over as a side like Middlesbrough for example, newly promoted side, can't expect too much in the first season. But as the years go by, we get better and better and better, and you see the progression like that. So that's how the squad is currently set up. You saw the squad report in the, uh, the first 11 I'll probably run with too before we make transfers. And also quite a few players got put on the transfer list as well. Uh, there are some old players there who simply put won't be doing too much for us in the first season, and uh, just a couple of youngsters who I don't think will succeed here. And also for player training as well. Uh, if this is the first series of mine you'll watch, then uh, if you don't know too much about me, player training is something I don't really focus on whatsoever, really. It's, it's a cool little feature that EA added last year, but to be honest, I just set up five drills, simulate them, and never bother playing them. But uh, either way, as you saw, we did get into a pre-season tournament with uh, Middlesbrough as well, and we drew the first game with Frankfurt, one goal apiece. Now, as this was going on, I was doing some scouting behind the scenes, scouting for loads and loads of players, putting them on my shortlist, and basically making sure that I could uncover their attributes and see just how good they are in FIFA 17. I, of course, had some transfer targets for uh, for. Uh, career mode and I uploaded the transfer targets video a few days ago on my channel but of course yeah, the stats changed from year after year for FIFA so of course I want to see how good they are in this year's FIFA not just in last year's FIFA as well so that's what I tend to do really in preseason whilst the games are going on in the preseason tournament this isn't my time to start looking to buy players straight away this isn't my time to start selling players to really it's all about making sure I do the scouting behind the scenes and whilst the games are being simulated I hope that my team can get through the group like we did in this preseason tournament get through to the semis but I'm just scouting the players putting them on my shortlist and eventually as soon as the tournament is coming towards its close that's when I start going in and looking to buy players and try to sign them for the Middlesbrough side so as for the transfer targets then I did say with Middlesbrough with the side we've inherited I said this in my transfer targets video I think the main area I'll be looking into strengthen is the center back role and the reason behind that is quite simple as one of our young fullbacks here goes on loads crew for two seasons the reason I say that is because at Borough right now they they only have three registered centre-backs, if you will. Now, when I say registered, I mean three players that have centre-back as their primary position on the pitch. Now, of course, Callum Chambers, as we all know, can play centre-back, no doubt about that. And I'm sure we can move one or two other players there as well, and they could fill in too. But right now, they have Ayala, Gibson, and also as well, Espinosa too, as their primary centre-backs. And I want to bring in another one as well to help us uh, help us strengthen the back line and uh, help us pick up more clean sheets this season. Because I think if we want to stay in the Premier League and also reach a mid-table position, like the board ask us to, then a new centre-back would really, really help us bolster that back line, keep those clean sheets, avoid those defeats, and make sure we can keep Middlesbrough in the Premier League and succeed by hitting the mid-table position the board are asking for and also finishing in a round of 16 place in the FA Cup. So you can see right here my shortlist, so many players I put on the shortlist. Again, this is pre-season for me. It's all about scouting these players and taking a look at their stats. Uh, I looked at three players initially, Heinz Nastasic and also as well uh, Lindelof from Benfica. We also put in some more bids to uh, Kevin Vimmer of Spurs. Didn't realise how high his salary was, though, at 67 grand a week, so wasn't sure about that deal anyway. We put in a bid regardless of £10 million. And also Chancel and Bemba of Newcastle United as well. Now, I put in valuation bids for all these players. Some people may wonder why that is, because if you look at the chief executive comments, most of the time he'll say that I should be asking for a little bit more money, or I should say they'll be asking for a little bit more money. But I always encourage valuation bids. If you're a new player to career mode and you want to start buying some players, I would always encourage from your first bid putting in a valuation bid it's very 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 rare that they'd ever flat out reject you and you wouldn't get another chance to put in another bid so yeah always put in a valuation bid to begin with because sometimes you'll be surprised a club may well let a player go for their valuation even though they even though your chief executive suggests that they'll be worth more than that but still we are going to let some players go as well one of those is David Nugent possibly the QPR for his valuation at 1.6 million pounds now Nugent of course an experienced English striker not a bad player whatsoever for the Middlesbrough side, but I want to build a younger side with Borough 
Nugent, of course, won't have any more potential, any more room to develop. He's stuck as he is right now in the early 70s for overall. I'm happy to let him go as the Painter is also going to go as well to Pisa as well. A 62 overall, I think he was left midfielder. He can go. And uh, yeah, I want to bring a young, I want to bring in some younger players for Middlesbrough as well. And I will be looking to strengthen the striker position too. And if Nugent goes, I'll look for a replacement for him if QPR match our counter offer. But as you can see right here, loads of clubs do reject our bids for their centre backs. Newcastle, Spurs, Benfica, and Schalke all said no to the deals we put in. But again, this is why I encourage valuation bids right from the beginning. Because FC Cologne or Köln, I can never pronounce the team name right, from the Bundesliga in Germany, said that £7 million would be enough for us to offer Dominique Kainz a contract and try and convince him to come to the Riverside Stadium. So for £7 million, I would definitely take a 77 overall centre-back at just 22 years old. So we offer him a contract. We shall wait and see what he says, as we also put in a new bid there for Lindelof as well of Benfica. So that's why I encourage valuation bids right from the beginning, because again, you may be surprised. Some clubs may accept valuation bids, even though it can be at times quite rare. But still, we did get through to the pre-season tournament final as well, where we'll take on a German side, Frankfurt as well, for this one here at the Signal Aduna Park. And I decided to play it as well in pre-season friendlies. Again, if this is the first series of mine you watched, then basically, I don't play pre-season friendlies. I don't really care about them at all, to be honest. But if we can make it through to the final, I'll at least consider playing it. And if it's the first season, I think it'll be quite fun to play, as you see my, my uh, manager there on the touchline for the first time. So I thought I'd play this pre-season uh, tournament final for you as well. And uh, you'll see the highlights in just a moment's time. But for the games as well, I will say in this series, I asked uh, my subscribers to vote in a poll whether they'd like to see me play the games live or most of them post commentary or some of them post commentary and some of them live. And throughout this series, uh, the, the games that aren't too important, aren't really too big for us, I'll be doing them as post commentaries for the commentary style. But for the games that are really important, you know, your first games of the season, your final days, for example, FA Cup semi-finals, big relegation six-pointers, they're really important games. I'll play those as live commentary and you can see me reacting to what's going on this screen live. But for this one, I did do a post-commentary, didn't decide to do a live commentary, and as you can see, it was the final of the preseason tournament. Wasn't too worried whether we won it or not, but I still was looking forward to hopefully picking up the maximum prize money available. And the first chance of the game did fall to us as well, my first game on the full FIFA 17 release. As you can see, still need to work on a couple of things. Surrender possession there with Valdez, and Frankfurt had their first chance of the game just before the break here. But in the 42nd minute though, how about this? We had a chance just before half time to open the scoring in the game that had very few chances in the first half. Negredo was played through by Adama. The Spaniards linked up and Negredo on loan from Valencia would open the scoring and 43 minutes in, we would take the lead in the pre-season tournament final. And the guy that got the lovely little assist was Adama, our winger. Now, of course, if you watch my Rayo Vallecano save last year, first and foremost, thank you for that. But you'd know all about this guy. But if you didn't watch that series, which not a lot of people would have done as it was coming to towards the end of FIFA 16, a lot of people had lost interest in FIFA completely. You wouldn't know about the brilliance of our 30, uh, number 37, I should say, for Middlesbrough Adama. I signed him for Rayo from Villa. He was unbelievable. And in the first game I used him in FIFA 17, he pulls off that absolutely fantastic little flick over his head and the defender's head, ran away with him first time through ball, rolls it through to Negredo, who finds the back of the net. So of course, we're playing a 4-2-3-1 in most games, probably this season with Middlesbrough. That's my intention anyway. So we'll be looking to Negredo to score the goals for us in this uh, first season for us on loan from Valencia and it was great to know that in the first game I played with him he did open up his account non-competitively but still great to see so 1-0 to Middlesbrough there was a game a few chances really not too much in the first half and in the second half here not much really happened until the 73rd minute a damage cross wasn't really dealt with by the goalkeeper and Ledbeer off the bench could only fire his shot wide of the post but it was how the game will finish as well Middlesbrough won Frankfurt nil not the best of games to be honest I discussed this during the demo and it does look like it might be similar in FIFA 17 as well but the AI didn't really attack me too much that is a common problem with the AI on legendary as well but having said that it is worth pointing out this was a pre-season tournament it was a friendly it's non-competitive football so I guess we couldn't have expected too much and I'm sure when we play the competitive games in the Premier League in the FA Cup the Capital One Cup and of course hopefully hopefully in Europe as well in seasons to come I'm sure we'll have much feistier and attack minded opponents but still it it was good to know we won the trophy. Again, it wasn't really too important for us. I wasn't really too fussed whether we won the final or not, but I guess it was my first game in FIFA 17, so I was hopeful of picking up the silverware. And of course, for Middlesbrough as well, it is worth pointing out that in their club's history, they've only ever won one major trophy, and that came just over a decade ago in the League Cup. So hopefully, hopefully,
hopefully we'll see these scenes in many seasons to come but in competitions that are more important of course the FA Cup the Premier League and you never know maybe in Europe as well as the seasons go on that is my intention regardless again when I take over a side like this I always want to build the side up make them better and better and better as we transition from again a side that's not too bad but I want them to become really awesome in many seasons to come so start as you mean to go on that's the way the best way of looking at it. it's maybe a non-competitive tournament it may not be a major on and that's for sure but start as you mean to go on we won this tournament and hopefully more to come as well and for a damn we're getting man the match as well again if you didn't watch my Rayo save that's totally fine I wouldn't expect expected many of you too but he was a monster in the second season of the Rayo side and uh, hopefully more of the same in this season and in this FIFA as well lovely little assist and a great little finish by Negredo that was the moment of the match no doubt about that so we start as we mean to go on we win the pre-season tournament and that will end episode number one in my FIFA 17 career mode as well guys so a big big thank you for watching much love to each and every one of you and once again thank you for staying patient with me whilst I got the first episode made and if you want to see the second episode later on tonight then get this video to 2,000 likes and it will go up in just a few hours time so thank you for watching please leave a like if you did enjoy this episode don't forget to comment and tell me where you'll be starting your first manager career mode with in FIFA 17 and I hope to see you for episode number two in my FIFA 17 career mode later on tonight